Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 13, introduction to arrays, number 21, the last button. Our user can now move forward through our list of favorite things. And we're about to write code that allows them to move backwards as well. If you've written your code to reference your global index, then this should only require you to decrease its value by one and reuse the code and update the screen outputs. Before we write the code for backwards, Let's start working on cleaning up our code now. We want to remove some repeated code. Once you add the code for moving backwards through your array, your program will have three places where it updates the screen by setting your text of your screen elements. Rather than repeating this code, we should create a function that updates the screen and calls to it every time we need to refresh those elements. This will not only make our program easier to read and avoid those errors that can arise when redundant code is used, but it also makes it easier to change how our program runs, since all this code that updates a screen is in a single place. Ooh, that does sound a little tricky though. We have a do this, write a function that contains the set text commands you have used to update the screen. Replace these places in your code where you used to have these commands with calls to your new function. Add an event handler to the last button that will decrease the global index variable by one and then update the screen by calling your new function. Run your program to confirm the user can move forward and backward through the list and that the output displayed is correct. Note, you may notice your program throws an error if the global index goes out of bounds. Don't worry about that for now. We're gonna fix that in a couple of lessons. Hmm, well, one of this sounds really easy, that's using the last button. The tricky part here, though, is cleaning up this code. What are they talking about? Well, right now we have our set text here at the beginning. This just kind of indexes everything. And then we also have it inside our next button function because we need the area to update. How do we do that? We do that through functions. We need to do a last button, and the last button essentially is gonna look almost exactly like this, except instead of current index doing a plus plus, we're gonna use a minus minus or dash dash, and that'll decrease by one. But then, and we'll have set text in three different spots. That means if we want to update something, that's really a big hassle because we have to go to three different spots. And all around, issues always arise when we have redundancy. Let's go ahead first though, and let's take care of this last button because that'll be easy. How do we do the last button? Pretty much the same way. We are going to drag our event handler in here. Our ID is last button. On a click, we want something to happen. Well, what do we want to happen? We want the current index to be decreased by one. That means this one will just go down by one. Missing a semicolon. Looks like I have a colon in there by accident. There we go. Next, we would add this text here. But again, we don't want to do that. We want to make a variable that will update it for us. Let's go down here and let's make another variable. And I'm just going to call this one update display. And this is going to currently just be empty. You'll notice it's saying, hey, you declared something, but you have not actually done anything to it. You have not called it. So now that we have that here, we have to call that function or we have to make a function to do that. And what function do we want? Let's just drag a function in here. And we want when update display is called, so anytime update display is called, we want our set text to come in here. So I'm gonna take one of our set text, I'm just gonna copy it right here, and I'm gonna put it within the function. Well, what would we do here? We created a variable update display, 
we created a function for it, and the function is just our two set text areas. That means when the favorite thing current index will be displayed here, and then the same thing with the tracker. We have to actually call this now. Let's go ahead and delete under current index plus plus. We want to do now our update display. That'll call to update display. So we're going to add one to our index here. Then it's going to go look at our set text part and then update it. Do we need this set text part up here now? No, we can get rid of that. Do we need it in our, well, we didn't write it with our minus or our previous button, so we don't need to take it out. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. Ooh, it looks like we have a missing semicolon somewhere. And we're actually not missing a semicolon anywhere. What's going on here? Well, why I created a variable, I actually don't need the variable part up here. Looking back at our code here, we created a new variable update display. And that update display has a function. And all that function is, is our two set text codes we wrote earlier. The one is setting the text area, to the current index in the array. The other is setting the array tracker to the current index it's actually on. We added a last button to this. And when I hit run, I should be able to go next and last. It should go up or down. If I get out of bounds of the three, I should throw an error. Let's see if that's what happens. Run one of three, two, uh-oh. Our last button is not working. Our display does not look like it's updating. What's going on here? Let's take a look at our code here. I know on my next button, I did current index, I added, then updated display. Down here, it looks like I forgot to update my display when I went through it. So I need to add my update display to my previous button. Let's hit reset. Next, there we go. Now I can go between one and three. Just like the adding, if we go below, we're gonna throw an error. So there is no zero or negative one of three. So we're gonna throw this error here. Other than that though, it looks like our code is working the way it should. Looking back here to our do this, we wrote a function that contains our set text. We called that one update display. We replaced the places in the code that used to have set text with our update display variable. And we added an event handler to our last button. It looks like our app is getting closer and closer to being done. In fact, we really only got a couple more things to do to it. Looks like we got everything we needed to get done in this lesson. Let's see if code.org wants anything else from us. No. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.